you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Righteousness is now your new nature. It's now your new identity. Righteousness, I want to repeat, righteousness is not necessarily the nice things you do. It is not even your morality or good manners, if you remember what I said. Righteousness is in reality who you are. You say it with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. You believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and instantly you become righteous. Good evening and praise be to Jesus. Welcome once again to our show tonight, The Marvelous Believer Show. I am Lucy Lepore and I am so honored and so excited that you are able to tune in and to join us as we continue with this show. I want to just first thank all those who have been giving us feedback. We've been receiving beautiful feedbacks. People's lives are changed. People's lives are transformed. I thank God for every one of you who has taken time to give us feedback. And if you'd want to give us feedback or to get to us, our number is down there on the screen. You can always write to us. You can tell us how the Marvelous Believer Show is changing your life, how Wema TV is changing your life, and we shall appreciate. So once again, you are welcome. Let's enjoy the show. Thank you. Hello there. This is Ben Isaac, and welcome to the Marvelous Believer Mentoring Program where we are unveiling God's amazing high opinion of you. This may shock you, but God believes in you. This may surprise you, but God actually loves you. God thinks you are super, and he has sent this program to you to let you know why such things are true. And uh, uh, the material for our teaching is really from the Bible. And I believe that when your heart is in fellowship with God, the Bible becomes God's present tense living voice from heaven. And God is not interested in playing some game. He means what he says. And he says what he means. So when he says he values you, that is exactly what he means. And I have come here to show you what God thinks about you. And I have been endeavoring for the past several times uh, to bring to you these amazing ideas from the Word of God. But I would like to encourage you to do something that I have told you over the past, that for you to get favor with God, you will have to agree with God completely. Say what God is saying about you. Think the way God wants you to think. For example, when you open the Word of God, it would be good for you to know that this is the Word of God, the very outbreathings and the opinion of God. And for you to benefit from it, you will have to agree with God. Remember, God is not a man to lie. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. God cannot lie. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way and the truth and the life. So when God speaks, he speaks reality. It doesn't matter the things happening in your life, in your body, in your home, at your place of work. It doesn't matter how low you are. But when you agree with God and say what God is saying about you, you will begin to see the changes happening almost instantaneously. Say these words with me. When you listen to the word of God, when you open the word of God to read it, say these words with me right now. God is who he says he is. I am who God says I am. God has what he says he has. I have what God says I have. God can do what he says he can do. I can do what God says I can do. Say those things. When God says you can do the works of Christ, that's exactly what he means. He's not trying to play some game. In fact, you don't need Greek and Hebrew to understand what God is saying. God speaks plainly. I remember uh, Paul the Apostle was writing to a young man called Timothy in chapter 1, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 4. He says, the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit speaks clearly. He does not confuse us. 
God does not want you to always walk in mystery. He wants you to walk in reality, in, in revelation. And that is what we are bringing to you today. So I was talking to you about the, the amazing price that Jesus paid to bring redemption to your life. The amazing price that Jesus Christ paid to carry the sins of the whole world. And you've got to know this. I really believe in having strong foundation and no devil in town will run you out of town. Nobody will ever lie to you again when you understand the depth of what Jesus said. Now, for purpose of timekeeping, I would like to read you something from a book I have written. I believe this wonderful medium, the television, uh, is going to... Is going to uh, let you know how you can access these books because we are going to avail them to you and you can always benefit from them. But I want you to listen. I was, I was talking about how Jesus died and Paul is saying I was crucified with Christ. But then we don't see Christ. We don't see Paul on that cross. The person we see on that cross was Jesus Christ. And I was saying that Jesus Christ died in our place. Actually, he died as us. He died as you. And so Paul is saying I'm crucified with Christ. Now listen to what happened. He was led away. Jesus Christ was led away like a prisoner into the dark pit of hell. Did you know that? It's in the Bible. The world of the dead. That is the place you should have gone to if Jesus Christ had not gone there for you. Listen. He was taking your place among the dead, among the cursed, among the sick, among the debauched of all generations. Among the condemned, he took your place. He took your place. Listen, he was there in hell, listening to the groans and the grunts of spirits, the spirits of the dead and wicked devils. And he did it for you. He was God's holy son who had never known sin. And here he is numbered among the dead, among the sinners of all generations. I would like to read your scripture in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7 to verse 10. Listen very attentively. He, you know, Isaiah was prophesying and he said he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her sharers is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He is taken from prison and from judgment for he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was uh, stricken. Listen, he, he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him and to put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Notice the word death. Death. That word death, when you go to the original Hebrew, you know your Bible, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and Aramaic. That word death in Isaiah chapter 53 is written, if you've got a good marginal Bible, it's written in plural, as in deaths. So Jesus Christ died more than one death. He died physically, but he also died spiritually. He was cut off from the life of God. He was cut off from the presence of God. Not only do we see him bow his head at the cross, he also died in the spirit. But he did all that because of you. Many of us, many of us see him breathing his last. Many of us see him saying it is finished. But Jesus Christ actually descended spiritually into the world of the dead, into hell, the place where all the damned of all generations go after they pass away from this world. But listen to me. When Jesus Christ had satisfied the demands of holy justice. Remember, justice said the soul that sinneth must die. Everybody that is a sinner must die. But Jesus Christ had to come and die for everybody so that everybody may not die. So he really had to die the way you were supposed to die. So he had to go down there. So when Jesus Christ had satisfied the demands of justice on behalf of every human being, God sent the mighty Holy Spirit into hell. And he raised Jesus Christ back to life. The Holy Scriptures teach that the Father sent his glory of the Holy Spirit to raise Jesus back to life. You can figure that out. I'm reading for you from uh, Romans chapter 6 verse 4. Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. 
Romans 8, 11 says, the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead. So we can figure out that the glory of the Father here, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Okay, so after Jesus Christ has satisfied the demands of justice, God sent the mighty Holy Spirit and raised his son back to life. Jesus Christ re-entered his cold, stiff body and he arose out of that grave after three gruesome, grueling days in Satan's chamber. Jesus Christ came back to life. But before he came out of there, Jesus Christ defeated and paralyzed the devil and all his demon slaves. I will talk about that in the coming days, in the coming weeks. I'll be talking about the eternal defeat of Satan and all his principalities and powers. But I want you to know that when Jesus came back to life, he left behind a defeated devil. He left all these demon slaves defeated and paralyzed, according to the teaching of the New Testament. So Jesus Christ eternally and finally defeated the devil and he triumphed over death and hell and the grave and he did that because he loves you. That's what makes you marvelous. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, Jesus spoke and said, I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore and I have the keys of hell and of death. Nobody else has those keys. The devil does not have them. Jesus has them. Now, in the death of Jesus, in his burial, in his resurrection, Jesus Christ legally made you eternally righteous. I am talking about awakening to righteousness. He made you legally and eternally righteous. Jesus Christ forgave you and he wiped your record clean of every sin of your life and he did it once and he will never do it again. From that one act of mercy and grace, he obtained what the Bible calls eternal redemption for everyone in the world, especially for the marvelous believer. That is why I insist that Jesus Christ catered for all your sins, past, present and future. And he did it even before you knew you needed it. And he did it even before you were born. He anticipated your coming to the earth. And he knew you would be born from Adam, a sinner. But Jesus Christ came and he already took care of business even before you showed up here. I want you to listen to this. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 26 and 28. For now, once... If the end of the world has he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12. By his own blood he entered in once into that holy place having obtained eternal redemption. You are as righteous as... As Jesus, uh, you listen, you are as righteous right now as you will ever be in the ages to come. You cannot become more righteous than you are. The way you are righteous right now is the way you will be righteous 10 million years from today. <laughs> the way you stand in righteousness here on the earth is the way you will stand in the eternal ages to come. And I'm reading the Bible. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. You are as righteous as Christ is. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. Jesus Christ is righteous, and you are righteous. I am talking about you who has accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Righteousness is now your new nature. It's now your new identity. Righteousness, I want to repeat, righteousness is not necessarily the nice things you do. It is not even your morality or good manners, if you remember what I said. Righteousness is in reality who you are. And you are who God says you are. The Bible says you are the righteousness of God in Christ. So say that with, say that with myself. Say, say it in consonance with the word of God. Say I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Even if you don't understand it, say it. Even if you cannot figure it out, how did it happen? Say it because that is what God says about you. 
So, you did nothing wrong to become a sinner. You did nothing evil. You did nothing evil to become a sinner. The only thing you did was you were born. Just by being born, descending from Adam, you were born a sinner. You become a sinner by being born after the first Adam. That is all you do to qualify to be a sinner. The same thing applies with righteousness. You become righteous by being born again after Jesus Christ, the last Adam. You were born after the first Adam, you were born a sinner. You were born again after the last Adam, you were born righteous. Now you understand why I'm saying you are the righteousness of God. This is almost too good to be true. It's amazing. It's good news. Listen, righteousness is a nature just like sin is a nature. You don't do anything good to become righteous. You are born again righteous. How does this happen? Listen carefully. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You say it with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. You believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and instantly you become righteous, just like that. You don't have to walk backwards. You don't have to walk on broken glasses. You don't have to fast for 51 days. You don't have to pay money. You don't, no, no, no. Just believe in your heart what Jesus Christ has done for you on the cross. I told you, Jesus Christ was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace came upon him. And with his stripes you were healed. When you believe those things and you say them with your mouth, it is credited to your account. Righteousness. 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 The only work you do in getting born again into this righteousness is for you to only believe in your heart what Jesus Christ did for you when he died, when he was buried, when he rose again. And the other thing that is that you must open your mouth and declare what you have believed in your heart. Listen, Romans chapter 4 verse 5. But to him that worketh not... But believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. God justifies the ungodly. God finds a sinner, a hell-bound man or woman, or boy or girl, and he says, you're righteous. I, I did not say that. It's in your Bible. Romans chapter 4 verse 5. God justifies the ungodly. The word justifies is God declares you righteous. God makes you righteous, not because you've done anything. He meets a rotten, stinking sinner and he says you're righteous. Just because the sinner accepted the message and he believed the message, God says you're righteous. God, you will be shocked who we shall find in heaven. Some of you may have been written off. And some of you may have written others off, but you will be shocked how many people God has justified. Romans chapter 4, verse 5, it says that God justifies the ungodly. I don't care how many sins you have committed. I don't care how deep the stains of your sins are. The Bible says God can declare you righteous. God can justify you. God can make you a clean, righteous person by faith in Jesus Christ. This is amazing. That is all. You could not save yourself. You could not have died for yourself and survive. You were not that qualified. Jesus Christ had to do it free of charge. He did it for you. Except that you have to receive it and believe it. You have to receive it and believe it. And the resultant miracle is so thorough that it is as though you had never sinned before God. When God washes you. There is no evidence that your sins ever existed. I told you the other day that your sins are taken away from you as far as the east is from the west. The blood of Jesus Christ purifies you, cleanses you. It doesn't matter who else remembers what you did. In the books of God, there is nothing wrong with you. You have been declared righteous. My God.
This is the greatest miracle in the world for a sinner to become a child of God. A totally brand new person is born. A righteous person who has never existed before. That is why the Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he becomes a new creation. Old things are passed away. Your old sins, those deep ugly stains, those things that you did that you're not you're even afraid to tell people of the things you did. You would never even say it out of your mouth. Those deep ugly stains of sin. Jesus Christ has washed you and when he looks at you, there is no evidence that you were ever a sinner. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become brand new. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You cannot boast of this. You cannot say, oh, I saved myself. Have you heard of people who say they came to Christ? Have you ever heard people who say, I found Christ? First of all, you did not know where to look. He found you. He saved you. He received you. And then... 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. This, every marvelous believer must remember this verse. If anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, old things have become new. It doesn't matter who wants to remember those ugly things you did. The Bible says they are passed away in the supreme court of the universe. The chief justice of the supreme court declares you righteous and there is nothing wrong with you. Amen. So righteousness, the righteousness that I am talking about here is not legalism where you follow certain strict rules and codes of conduct, holy creeds and regulations in order to gain acceptance with God. Righteousness is not our idea. We did not invent or originate that idea. We were not that smart. Righteousness was and still is God's idea. Our righteousness is from God himself. The Bible talks about it in Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. That their righteousness is of me saith the Lord. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment. You shall condemn because that is the heritage of the servants of God. And their righteousness is of me says the Lord. Your righteousness is not human righteousness. Your righteousness is not legalism. Your righteousness is given to you by God himself. And so let the devil go wherever he wants to go. But you have been declared righteous and your righteousness is the righteousness of God. Righteousness begins with God. Righteousness is a gift. It is a grace. It is an unmerited favor from God. You only receive a gift. You don't work for a gift. You, you only receive it. It comes upon the person who believes that Jesus Christ uh, died, as I have already pointed out. They which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. Those who receive the gift of righteousness, receive the gift of righteousness. You don't work for a gift. You receive, you receive the gift of righteousness. You receive it by faith. And if you're here and you've never received it, I want to help you to receive it. And when you receive it, the Bible declares of you in, in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, the Bible declares that there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. If these things are true, why do preachers condemn people? Why are preachers so harsh sometimes? We need to accept the gift of God. We need to give people the opportunity to come to Jesus without making them afraid with trepidation. Okay? So I now want to ask anyone here who is listening to me. If you are guilty, you conscious of guilt, something you did, some terror, God has forgiven you. Your sins have been washed away. You just need to receive that gift of righteousness. Receive it and those sins will never bother you again. You, your conscience is going to be cleansed. Jesus Christ is the propitiation for your sins. It doesn't matter who else is trying to say things about you. You can now be accepted by Jesus Christ. Receive his word into your spirit. Receive him into your life. Even those of you who knew Jesus Christ, you knew salvation, you were born again, and you may have stumbled, and now you feel heavy. The weight of the things you did are condemning you. I want you to be free right now in the name of Jesus, and I want you to receive the gift of righteousness that you may walk straight again. The Bible says that I am writing to you little children, that you sin not, but if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. 
Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation, the atoning sacrifice, the ransom for our sins. There is nothing God cannot forgive. There is no stain God cannot wipe away. Receive him today and walk in freedom. I can mend the condemnation because I'm sensing right now so many people are condemned. I don't know who is going to be watching this video, I'm telling you, but some people are feeling the condemnation. I rebuke the spirit of condemnation. I command the accuser of brethren to take his hands off your life. Walk in freedom in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to open your mouth and declare the things I have said. Say, Jesus, I believe with all my heart that God raised you from the dead. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. When you begin to speak like that, you will be amazed. You will be born again and everything will begin to change. The changes will begin to happen even in the outside. Your health will change. Your understanding will change. I'm telling you, miracles will begin to happen in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And I would like to thank you for tuning in and listening. Follow all the information that you're going to be given down there on the screen. I want you to listen. Tune in again next time for this Marvelous Believer program. God bless you. Bye-bye. You have heard it for yourself. Righteousness is a nature, just like sin is a nature. So we were born in the nature of sin, and now we are born again in the nature of righteousness. It could not have been put better. Thank you so much for tuning in. We now know we are righteous. We must walk being conscious of who we are, the righteousness of Christ. Uh, remember to tune in every Monday at 9.45 p.m. on Wema TV YouTube channel. We will always find us here. We are enjoying your fellowship. We are so blessed that you are always with us. And if you'd like a copy of the Marvelous Believer book uh, written by Pastor Ben Isaac, you can get in touch with us. My number is right there on the screen. You can call us. You can pop in at the Wema TV studios and you'll be able to grab a copy for yourself. God bless you so much. See you again on Monday.